Hey y'all, uh, I'm going to say that this is going to be a non-spoiler review just because absolutely nothing happens in this book to spoil. So I got this book and the second book in the series from my annual library sale this year. I had originally started reading this book on e on ebook and I got about a hundred pages in or so before I DNF'd it. But it's one of those classics that people talk about and it's part of the whole, you know, cultural conversation. So I thought, you know, it, I need to read it. I need to read the book. It's 50 cents. Let's pick it up. Let's read the book. Sometimes it's easier for books I'm not enamored with to have a physical book so I can actually see progress and I don't know, I find that easier for me for books that require a little more converse, or a little more concentration uh, to have a physical book. So I have never seen the movies. I had read 100 pages of the first book before. I really did not know the story beyond the very, very basics that you just pick up from, you know, being alive. So I really did not know what the story was about. And so... Um, 458 pages in, I still really don't know what this story is all about. But we're going to give it a try anyway. So we start out in the Shire, which is where the hobbits live. Hobbits are like that cool neighborhood stoner that you idolized as a kid, but as you grew up, you realize it was just a sad loser. They eat too much, drink too much, can't be bothered to show up for work, and there's something funky going on with their feet that they really should get checked out. So we start with this rich hobbit named Bilbo, who inherited all his money and doesn't seem to be doing much with it. Bilbo was a hermit who didn't date, never married, and instead took in a poor, handsome, highly passive, and much younger male hobbit as his sole companion. Do with that what you will. Anyway. So Bilbo decides that he's getting old and that his young Padawan needs to, you know, on his coming of age birthday, take over his fortune and everything. So Bilbo decides to give Frodo uh, all of his money, all the house, all the titles, and also his gold ring. So that Bilbo can then go on his one last grand adventure. Now, the gold ring is basically a Trojan horse. You get all the money, you get the title, you get the house, you get all the bling, but you also have to pay this huge price by accepting the ass ache that is this ring. Well, technically that's not a price. That's a gift with purchase. So we spend all of this book and presumably the next two books dealing with the problem that is this ring. Gandalf, who is kind of a dick, basically tells Frodo that the ring belongs to the big bad and is super powerful and the ring needs to be destroyed so that the big bad won't come and kill everybody. Except that the ring is kind of sentient and it's gonna end up messing with everybody's head and may very well end up killing whoever happens to be holding on to it. The gardener, Sam, overhears all this and now suddenly we have a group formed together to go take this ring to Mount Doom throw it into the fire and get rid of it. Gandalf seems to spend the rest of the book overly preoccupied with minor details that don't seem to make any difference whatsoever. He is obsessed with how exactly the ring came to be in Bilbo's possession in the first place. He spends so much time and energy trying to figure out, was it a gift? Was it a trick? Was it coerced? Was it given freely? Who cares? What does that matter? You've got a powerful thing that you need to destroy so that the big bad won't come and kill you. And you're, and this is gonna change somehow if Bilbo stole it versus it was given it, given to him? Gandalf spends all this time, like all this time trying to figure out for no apparent reason other than Gandalf is a judgy McJudgy pants. I mean, really, how is that going to change anything that you need to do now? How does it matter how it came to be in your possession? It's your problem now. You got to deal with it. What does it matter what came before? What does it matter? 
I did like Sam. Sam is a hard worker. Sam is both curious and honest. Sam is naive, but he's he takes his obligations and responsibilities very seriously. I like Sam. Frodo sucked. Pretty sure Frodo could have been replaced by a Labrador and the story wouldn't have changed much. He sort of just puts around and procrastinates doing all the things that other people have decided that he should do. Good boy. He has so little conviction about anything that this book never convinced me that he would actually go out of his comfort zone and trek through the woods for any reason. I kept... I still don't believe he would do that. You know what? No, no, I take it back. A Labrador would not have taken Sam for granted the way that Frodo did. A Labrador would appreciate Sam. And there were other characters, of course. Um, apparently there's this guy, Aragon, and he looks like this. But every time I saw the name, I kept picturing Aragog from Harry Potter. I can avoid being seen if I wish, but to disappear entirely. That is a rare gift. So that was both distracting and entertaining. So anyway, we set off from the Shire and into the woods. And that's it. That, that's the rest of the book. Walking around in the woods. There are some bad guy minions that are trying to find the crew. They don't find the crew. Crew meets up with some elves. They take a nap. These characters love to sing songs, but the songs always seem to make them sad. There's a big meeting of the minds who then decide that Frodo should go to Mount Doom, which they were already doing. So yeah, this whole book, its plot, is about setting off on a journey to go put this ring into the fires of Mount Doom. And then the very last line of the book is them deciding to go off on a journey in order to put the ring into the fires of Mount Doom. So I'm just gonna piss off everybody and give this one star and say, I can't imagine trying to recommend this to anybody. I am not going to put myself through the torture of the second book. I don't care if it was only 50 cents. I want my 50 cents back. Actually, I want my dollar back. So that's all from me today. Yell at me in the comments. Don't hold back how you really feel. Always happy to hear from you. And until then, bye bye. So that's all from me today. Talk to me in the I I I don't get it. So that's all from me today. Yell at me in the comments. Don't hold back how you really feel.